One of the supervolcanoes on the west coast is Long Valley Caldera. We've seen some earthquakes swarming there. This is on Live Science, huge cache of magma hidden beneath California supervolcano. Jenna Breyer has this article. Some 760,000 years ago, before our species took its first steps on Earth, an enormous eruption in what is now Eastern California sent high-speed rivers of ash and lava across an area tens of miles across. The event ejected ash as far east as present-day Nebraska, if not further. When the dust settled, six days later, the Long Valley supervolcano had disgorged about 1,400 times the volume of lava, gas, and ash as the famous 1980 super eruption of Mount St. Helens in Washington. 1,400 times that mount. And since in 1978, Long Valley has shown signs of restlessness. And uh, with the depressed valley at the center of the volcano, the caldera, showing uplift, deforming, possibly from magma moving towards the surface. Magma is the hot rock, as we know, stored beneath the volcano that ultimately erupts into land and is renamed lava. Some scientists also argue that liquids from stored magma may be causing the uplift. Now scientists think they've figured out what's happening in the bowels of this beast, finding evidence of a mother load of magma, some 240 cubic miles, stored like syrup between the rocks making up giant stacks of pancakes. And that's enough melt or magma to support another super eruption, like the one we, that took place 760,000 years ago. Ashton Flinters of the U.S. Geological Survey in Menlo Park, California, and colleagues wrote online August 2nd in the journal Geology. While the new findings don't solve the mystery of what's causing the recent uplift, they do provide a more detailed picture than ever of Long Valley's magma system, Flinders says. Now, what's found beneath the caldera? Until now, studies of Long Valley have fallen into one of two groups. They either image small features down to shallow depths, say down to a few kilometers, or took uh, images of uh, larger features down to much deeper levels. And this has left a bit of a shadow zone in the mid-crust where the shallow studies cannot see and deeper studies tend to blur anything they do see. This is what Flinders explained. What we're seeing is not new, it's just that we're seeing it at this level of detail for the very first time. To capture that detail, the researchers looked at how ambient noise, that's the seismic waves that constantly travel through the Earth, move through the area beneath the Long Valley caldera. He said, we used physics-based computer simulations to model the way this energy travels through the volcano. The simulation needed a lot of computer power, so the researchers borrowed time on the supercomputer called Pleiades at NASA's Ames Research Center in Mount View, California. And to do this research on a single computer like you might have in your home would require, you won't believe this, that one computer to run for 22 years. The resulting 3D image shows quite a trove of partly melted magma beneath the caldera. But just because there's enough magma for a magma mega explosion does not mean that one is coming, he said. While it's impossible to predict when an eruption might occur, we can say that an eruption from Long Valley in our lifetimes is extremely unlikely. To be safe, the USGS is monitoring Long Valley and the neighboring Mono Inyo volcanic chain for any signs of unrest, he said. Now, the Mono craters are basically just north of Long Valley, and they're situated between uh, San Francisco and Las Vegas. And we've had Trefra fall about 20 centimeters there, five centimeters towards the outskirts of it, the volcanic hazards, Long Valley, the Long Valley uh, volcano to Mono Lake region is one of the three areas in California that are in the United States Geological Survey's 
volcanic hazards program. And these areas are in the program because they have been active in the last 2,000 years. So that's pretty recent. About, uh, and uh, they have the ability to produce explosive eruptions. About 20 eruptions occurred on the Monoinho craters chain at intervals of only 250 to 700 years during the past 5,000 years. And the seismic soundings and lava composition indicate that these eruptions most likely originate from discrete and small magma bodies. The rate of eruption over the last 1,000 years has increased with at least 12 eruptions occurring. 12 eruptions in 1,000 years. The eruption in the past 5,000 from the Monoinho craters have expelled less than 0.24 cubic miles of magma. Future eruptions in the area will likely be similar in size to the small and moderate events of the past 5,000 years. There is one in 200 chance per year of an eruption occurring along the, chi the chain, and an eruption in the foreseeable future is probably more likely along the Mono Inyo chain than an unrelated eruption inside the Long Valley caldera. A wide range of effects expected from future eruptions along the Mono Inyo craters are ash and rock fragments, tephra that is, and they may accumulate to thickness of 33 feet. So that's pretty thick, don't you think? Near the eruption of the Mono Inyo vent and downwind accumulations of tephra may exceed eight inches at a distance of 22 miles. Winds in the area tend to blow towards an east or northeastern direction more than half the time and towards any eastern direction more than 80% of the time. The grain size and thickness of this tephra generally decreases uh, with distance from the vent and volcanic ash will likely contaminate air routes, of course, east of the vent. Severe damage from superheated flows of gas and ash and pulverized rock, that is, pyroclastic flows and surges, may occur at least 9.3 miles from an explosive eruption. The amount of damage depends on vent location, topography, and the volume of the magma erupted, but the P flows from vents on Mammoth Mountain or other high vents could travel farther by gaining extra momentum from the descent. Valleys along the route will be more impacted than ridges, but flows and surges could overtop some ridges. And eruptions near snowpacks, of course, may produce lahars of mud and ash that devastate valleys and watersheds. Steam blast eruptions under a lake could form large waves capable of flooding nearby areas and even starting mud flows. Basalt lava flows may extend more than 31 miles from the vent, Dacite and rhyolite lava produce short, thick flows that rarely extend more than three miles from the vent, and mound-shaped features called lava domes are often created from these flows. The rock fragments thrown from a growing lava dome can reach three to six miles from the dome, and a partial collapse of the steep-sided growing dome can send pyroclastic flows outward at least three miles. Taller domes tend to form larger pyroclastic flows that travel farther. So these are expected to erupt uh, much more easily and faster and sooner than the Long Valley caldera. The Mono Inyo craters, which form the volcanic chain in eastern California, sitting on a narrow north-south trending fissure extending from the north shore of Mono Lake through western Long Valley caldera south of Mammoth Mountain. The chain is within the Inyo National Forest in Mono County. The nearest incorporated community is Mammoth Lakes, and the crater, craters are in Mono Basin, which is part of the Great Basin geography area. The Mono craters are 11 miles chain of at least 27 volcanic domes, three large glass flows called coulees, and various explosion pits and other associated volcanic features. The domes of the chain lie on a roughly north-south trending arc that is concave to the west and located south of Mono Lakes. And the um, Inyo craters, the two southernmost Inyo craters, are open pits in a forested area that are about 600 feet across and uh, 100 to 200 feet deep, each with small ponds covering their floors. 
a quarter mile north of these is another Inyo Craters explosion pit on top of Deer Mountain. And farther north of these craters are five lava domes, including Deadman Creek Dome, Glass Creek Dome, Obsidian Dome, and Wilson Butt. Butte. These domes are composed of gray rhyolite, frothy pumice, and black obsidian. And the Mono Inyo Craters volcanic chain extends, of course, into the Long Valley Caldera, which is a supervolcano, but is not related to the caldera, Caldera's volcanism. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.